four indictments, two impeachments, and one tried and true strategy so far. Forget about assembling an adequate legal defense. Don't bother addressing any of the facts. No. For Donald Trump, the plan is always this. Insist any effort at accountability is rigged, political persecution, corrupt, brought by people who just want to see him fail. Radical leftists. All right. Those of us here on Earth One see that strategy for what it is, what the congressman just described, deflection, designed to muddy waters and vilify anyone who would have Donald Trump answer like any of the rest of us would have to do for what he has done. Last night, attorneys for Donald Trump moved to dismiss most of the 13 charges brought against him by Fulton County DA Fonnie Willis. New York Times writes this, quote, the one-page motion from Mr. Trump's Georgia lawyer, Stephen H. Sadow, refers to a more expansive motion also filed on Monday by one of Trump's 18 co-defendants in the Georgia case, the lawyer Ray Smith. He's an attorney who helped the Trump campaign peddle false voter fraud claims and set up a fake slate of Trump electors. In Ray Smith's filing, he argues DA Willis seeks to, quote, punish protected First Amendment activity. A bold gambit to claim that a coup attempt built around falsely convincing hundreds of millions of people that the election was stolen when it was not was just a guy exercising his right to free speech. Joining our conversation, New York Times Washington correspondent Glenn Thrush. Joining me at the table, state attorney for Palm Beach, Florida. Dave Ehrenberg is back. Charlie's still with us. I mean, Glenn, the, the Jack Smith's team, as well as Fonnie Willis's team, seem to have anticipated what Donald Trump has trotted out really since the insurrection. His, his allies used this um, when Congress was investigating January 6th. But they, they still think it'll work is what's interesting to me. What, what's going on here? Well, you know, I think that we're dealing again with uh, a client, uh, Donald Trump, who doesn't really understand the, the nuances of these court cases so much as he wants to drag this into the 2024 election. So he is... Uh, making a lot of the same arguments that he's going to make on the campaign trail. Uh, and it also just kind of suits his general sense of, of anger and desire for retribution. Um, a couple of weeks ago in Washington, we saw Jack Smith's uh, uh, legal team led by Tom Windham explicitly raise this point over and over again, that Trump was sort of, Trump was sort of creating an environment where he was seeming to be attempting to taint the jury pool by saying all these negative things, both about Judge Chutkin, who is presiding in the case in Washington, and the prosecution. So this is the this is the way he's going to go. This is how it's going to go. There will be no differentiation, I think, in Trump's posture outside the courtroom with his posture inside the courtroom. You know, Glenn, you said something that stuck in my brain, and, and I sort of have, have, have tried to re-quote you on how this contamination or the, or the blast radius of the strategy now includes House Republicans who reached into the Hunter Biden plea deal and at least seemingly from the outside successfully contributed to that going away. Um, what do you make of the Republican Party establishment really saying nothing about Trump interfering or House Republicans interfering with criminal prosecution, something that um, I think Chris Christie and Asa Hutchinson are outliers, but by and large, the rest of them have nothing to say about Trump's continued onslaught against the rule of law. Well, I think we learned a lot about the way the Republican establishment relates to Donald Trump from the uh, 2020 Republican National Committee party platform. Mm -hmm. There was none. There was Donald Trump as the, as the nominee. Um, this is the way... It has been for, for a long time. Um, and, and, Nicole, I think you really hit the nail on the head here. It really does seem that the Hunter, you know, that there is a, a willful attempt on the part of House Republicans and with Trump abetting them to basically create this slurry of confusion in which you blend the Hunter Biden slash Biden crime family narrative with these prosecutions so that people get confused. And if you don't think it's working, all you have to do is look at that CNN poll from over the weekend. 61% of respondents, if, I, if I'm getting my numbers right, think that Joe Biden has interfered on behalf of his son in the Justice Department investigation. Now, 
we may there may be some remarkable investigative reporting that shows up over the next few months that proves that. But this has been looked at. We've looked at it. Other people have looked at it. The House Republicans have looked at it, and they've produced no evidence of that. So that means a substantial majority of Americans believe something which is not true. And that tells you precisely why the Republicans are attempting to break down the walls between all these cases and just throw it all into one room and have chaos reign. It's, it's such an important thing. I, I think that Glenn just laid it out perfectly. There is no evidence. And, and what he said is, is they're not varying degrees of truth, but it's a truth even acknowledged readily by Republicans in good standing, people like Ken Buck and other members of Kevin McCarthy's um, caucus. And 61 percent of Republicans believe the lies. How do you how do you sort of protect and preserve the integrity of these prosecutions when you're dealing with a majority of Republicans who don't believe them? It's a disadvantage, Nicole, for prosecutors because we can't speak about pending cases. It's a one-sided conversation. Mm. The defendants get to put out all this misinformation and the prosecution has to stay quiet. That's why it is crucial that we have cameras in the courtroom, at least in Georgia. That's why it was a win for transparency when the federal judge said, no, we're not going to remove the case of federal court because then the cameras would be removed as well. So I think it's important for transparency's sake to counter the misinformation with lies court activity so that people right, can so see people what's see there. with their own eyes. Exactly. I think that's such an interesting point, and it may explain some of the desperate moves that don't seem to even be rooted in any legal theories by the president in Georgia. Right, exactly, because you're seeing all these motions that are doomed to fail, but right. you know, because they're desperate. They want that case to get to federal court. It's not going to. They want to eliminate the cameras. They want a more conservative jury pool that includes Marjorie Taylor Greene's district. It's not going to happen. But the one thing that Trump wins by losing is in delay. All these motions, mm -hmm. which will be denied, will help push the case little by little. But I do think the case in D.C. with Judge Chutkin is built for speed. It's on the fast track. That's the case that's going to be tried first.